my maternal grandfather, Peter Moretti, succumbed to pancreatic cancer on August 10, 1970. There are two things that I remember from the period that he suffered from this illness and its toxic remedies. I can recall going with my mom to my grandparents' house so she could give him an injection. An injection of what? I don't know, because I was only four or five years old when we were participating in this ritual. False hope. The other thing I can remember is going with my mom when she went to pick up Grandpa Peter after what must have been his chemo treatments. When we passed by the little pharmacy at the traffic circle near his home, he would insist that my mom stop so he could go in and buy a bag of lemon slices or Sour Balls hard candies for my brother and I. Grandpa Peter was a hard candy guy. He was also the life of my brother's and my birthday parties. Grandpa Peter would position two birthday hats sideways over his head so that they covered his ears. We have at least one photograph of him sitting at my parents' kitchen table with cone ears. But while Grandpa was sick, my mom said he was in a lot of pain. She told me he would drive to Steamboat Dock in Verplank and stand by the water, thinking and looking. This is what made his stops for hard candy so, well, miraculous. There was just no pain big enough to stop Grandpa Peter from buying hard candy for his grandchildren. I still have the copy of Mammals, a guide to familiar American species that Grandpa Peter gave me. It's really beat up. I wrapped it in archival tissue and packed it with other family heirlooms so I can pass it on to someone I feel is worthy of this part of him. At the time he got sick, Grandpa Peter was building a new house for him and my Grandma Minky. It was next door to their old house, the one where my mom spent most of her childhood and early adulthood. I truly forget how it got finished or who finished it. But it got built and my grandma Minky moved in. Not long after my grandpa passed away, my mom came into my bedroom in the middle of the night and asked me to put my coat on over my pajamas and come with her. She told me that Minky needed company and I was the perfect candidate for the job of company keeper. It felt like an adventure, tiptoeing out of our house with my PJs on and Mom driving me over to Grandma Minky's house. I remember sitting in her den and her explaining to my kid self why she needed me there. I am missing your grandpa and don't want to be by myself tonight. She kept Grandpa Peter's glasses on the hearth of her living room's fireplace until she passed away in 1988. I don't know where his glasses are now, and neither does my mom. Maybe if I extend my arms far enough, Grandpa Peter's glasses will find me. <laughs> 